Some values are more important than others. Some things are deeper than other things. We all have that sense. We know the difference between a, a shallow story and a deep story. And, but we don't know what we mean by deep and we don't know what we mean by shallow, but we mean something. And so then I would say, well, the deepest values are religious. That's a definition. It's an observation. Well, are some values deeper than others? Are some values more basic than others? That means there's a hierarchy of values. And that means there's something at the top that unites it all or everything is fragmented. Those are the alternatives. And then so one of my propositions is that, well, what Christianity is, psychologically speaking, at least in part, is the attempt to specify the nature of the highest value. And part of that's an abstraction. And so that's what God is in the Old Testament, is an abstract representation of the highest value. And then there's another problem is once you abstractly represent the highest value, how do you bring it down to earth so that it can guide your actions? And the, uh, the notion of the incarnation is the answer, it's at minimum, it's the answer provided by the collective imagination of Western civilization to the problem of the embodiment of the highest value. And are we gonna, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna be, are we gonna be children in the face of that? Or are we gonna think about it? Because it's a problem. Well, one of the things Mircea Eliad pointed out was, he was commenting, at least in part on Nietzsche's observation of the death of God. And Eliad said, well, God, God has died time and time again because one psychological problem with abstract ethical religious thinking is that the highest value can become so abstract that no one can have any relationship with it anymore. You don't know, how, you don't know what it means for you. You don't know how to act it out. You don't know how to embody it, and so it's meaningless. It disappears, it floats away. But then when that happens to a culture, there's no central unifying value. And then the culture fragments in a, in a manner that's analogous to the Tower of Babel in some sense. And so something has to serve as a uniting value, and it is the highest value. And I, don't, I do not believe that the rationalist types, the rationalist atheists, I don't believe they contend with these problems at all. They, and it's not because, it's because they don't understand them. They don't know these problems exist. They exist. These are fundamental problems. And when I say that Christianity is the attempt to answer the question of how the highest abstract value should be embodied, I mean that most seriously. And then you ask yourself as well, you know, you said to me earlier that the people who've been translating the biblical lectures have experienced some transformation in their own life. It's that's because they started to embody the the ethic. I can tell you, like, are you going to strive to embody the ultimate ideal or not? Because I could ask you, do you have anything better to do? How could you possibly have anything better to do? And if you don't want to do that, why don't you want to do it? Well, I don't believe in that. It's like, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Exactly. Do you not believe there are any values? Do you believe you can just pick and choose? Do you believe that there's no uniting values? And if there are uniting values, do you believe that you have an ethical obligation to act in accordance with them or not? And then what do you think will happen if you don't? Because I know what will happen if you don't. You'll fall into a pit and you'll drag the people around you into the pit with you. And as you suffer because you're in the pit, you'll delight in the fact that you're there and that you've dragged all those other people in there with you.